Just more want to make a reaction video to this uh, video title says Russia's hypersonic strike on Ukraine. Shocking truth, Scott Reader. Uh, let's see what he has to say. And I, I just I, I I I want to reinforce that point. Um, you know the the Russian weapon that was used. Uh, you know the the I'm getting ready to publish a paper on this today if we make it. Um, that that breaks down what I think it is. There's not much literature out there, but if you know the history of Russian ballistic missile design and and such, this was a weapon that um, the it, it's related to a weapon that the Russians were developing, the Soviets were developing back in the early 1980s called the Skorost. And the Skorost missile, 15 Ja 66, um, was quickly developed by then uh, Minister of Defense Ustinov to respond to the planned deployment of Pershing II missiles by the United States into Germany. The Russians were very afraid of the Pershing II because once you launch the Pershing II, seven minutes later, it hit Moscow. And uh, the Russians were not happy about that. So they built this missile, the Skorost, which was an amalgam of components drawn from the SS-20 Pioneer, the Mod-3 version of the Pioneer, the SS-25, which was still under development, the SS-27, which was top secret under development. Nobody even knew it existed. Um, and they put it all together in a two-stage missile uh, uh, topped with um, conventional warheads, and they were going to flood Czechoslovakia and East Germany with these systems uh, and monitor on a continuous basis uh, the Pershing II uh, bases. And the moment the Pershing II went to the field in a suspect, you know, in a, in, in a manner that looks, you know, suspicious, they would take it out preemptively. That was what the Skorost was all about, to preemptively take out emerging threats. Um, the, 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 the system was nearing uh, production when the INF, in fact, is it was ready to go into production in March of 1987. Um, but in December, uh, Ronald Reagan and Mikhail Gorbachev signed the Intermediate Nuclear Forces Treaty. So the Skorost went the way of history. And in doing so, the Skorost, um, uh, people need to understand, again, I, I, I keep telling people, you know, there was a time when we talked to the Soviets. There's a time when we talked to the Russians. Um, I, I spent a lot of time at the Russian embassy in the last two years attending functions and talking to Anatoly Antonov, the ambassador, and talking to uh, uh, Major General Bobkin, the defense attache, and talking to his officers uh, and having very detailed conversations. I just, you know, remind, Bobkin was a former, um, when we started talking, uh, he was... He's a strategic rocket forces guy who was in an SS-25 unit in Novosibirsk when I inspected it in 1990. Um, what a small world we live in. Um, and he was sent to the United States to help facilitate arms control talks, how to prevent the very crisis that we're in. Uh, Anatoly Antonov is an expert on the United States. He speaks English fluently. Um, and he uh, was, of course, the man who negotiated the New START Treaty with um, uh, Rose Guttmuller. Um, he was ready to engage again on extending the New Star to prevent exactly what's happening. Anatoly Antonov was here for seven years and the U.S. didn't talk to him. Uh, Bobkin arrived in the... This is uh, the sad reality from the West. They never want to negotiate. They never want to talk to anybody. If they see you as the boogeyman for them to continue producing more weapons and kill more people and make more money, then it's a done deal. The West will never ever recognize you as the good guy. Once you are bad guy and they label you as such, it's done. They have written a history that cannot be changed. The Western countries, even today, if you take a look at what they're doing right now against Russia, Russia was open to negotiation, open to talk, including German Chancellor Olaf Scholz. He spoke to Putin two months ago, just two months ago, to reach to an agreement where they would not have to continue fighting and sanction Russia and 
not being able to do business with Germany. But look what Biden did. Look at what Keir Starmer did just a few days ago. They blew it up on our faces. There is absolutely going to be no peace as long as these greedy military industrial complex leaders are in position in the Western countries. Think about the genocide. They profited from this genocide billions and billions and billions of dollars. I'm talking about the military industrial complex and people in the government who are supporting them. So more killing, more money. That's how they run their business. Exactly what they have done with Ukraine. A lot of hundreds and thousands of Ukrainians died. For who? For this military industrial complex. Because if they don't die, then they go somewhere else. And they poke another country. They provoke another country. They start war with another country. Therefore, we, none of us are safe uh, in this world. As long as this greedy, as long as this greedy people, the military, military industrial complex, they're in power. It is as simple as that. So Scott Reader, what he's saying here is exactly that. That Russia wanted to have a man in Washington as an ambassador who understands English, who speaks fluent English. He talks just like the United States people, native speakers. But nevertheless, he was never approached by U.S. to have some kind of talk, to ease the situation, to normalize ties with Russia, invite Putin, and forget about the whole thing. But what they did was absolutely nothing. Because they want us to believe that Russia is the boogeyman and that they need to produce this weapon and use them. The first thing that happened is that the Ukrainians got him blackballed in the defense attache circuit, so nobody talked to him. Had they talked to him, as I did, they would have gotten an insight into how the strategic rocket forces felt about the INF Treaty, about the START Treaty, about disarmament, about what Gorbachev did to them, um, and what, how they feel that impacted their national security. And you would understand that they were very bitter about this entire experience. They felt that they had been weakened by it and that they were ready to regain the former glory of the Soviet rocket, strategic rocket forces. Um, if you know anything, again, if you've studied Russian military history, Soviet military history, you understand that the present day is very much influenced by the past. So when the United States withdraws from the Intermediate Nuclear Forces Treaty in 2019 under President Reagan, Putin said, you know, we view this treaty as being very important uh, to prevent war. And so we will not develop new intermediate range systems and we'll act as if the treaty is in force so long as you don't deploy intermediate systems into Europe. Of course, earlier this year in a NATO exercise in Denmark, we deployed intermediate nuclear forces, intermediate range missiles, nuclear capable to Denmark. And the and, and Putin said, okay, we're uh we're moving forward. And the byproduct of this is the missile that was tested the other day. Um but people also uh, think about this uh, in Poland. They now have stationed 10,000 U.S. troops. They have opened a new base just uh, a week ago to provoke who? To provoke Putin, to provoke Russia in the name of defending Poland. But the irony is that with the Orenshik missile, these defense bases that those radars, radars that they install in Poland on the military basis, they're absolutely worthless. In other words, from the very beginning, the U.S. was just bluffing that they have this capability, they have that capability, they're going to be protecting Poland. None of those. They wanted Poland to fight for their own self. The U.S. will never fight Poland's war or Sweden's war, and this is why Colonel Douglas McGregor, he said to the Swedish people that you are on your own. Nevertheless, U.S. is opening military bases next door 
of Russia and provoking them and in installing new system all the while knowing that those things are really worthless but they wanted to do is because this will benefit the military industrial complex they will be the one to make money from this kind of military basis from this weapon installation and all that how you think they finance these troops in Poland then 10,000 it is by killing innocent people not just in Ukraine but also elsewhere in Gaza in West Bank in Iraq they go everywhere to kill people and make more money by using those weapons people don't understand what this missile is this missile is the modern day version of the Skorost you see the Russians are building a missile that can be pushed forward and be ready to preempt Dark Eagle, our intermediate missile. Uh, the Russians just put the uh, Mark 41 Aegis ashore on notice in Poland. That is a target. The target that will destroy it is this. Look at what this was. This is a missile that makes use of not the YARS, which is the what the Rubiege, the, S, the RS-26, which was this is derived from, used the YARS first stage. This uses the Kader first stage, the Cedar. Now, most people don't know what the Cedar is, but the Ukrainians just came out and said that it's the Cedar. How would they know? Well, they have the debris. And on the debris are serial numbers. And the serial numbers show what the booster was. This is the most modern booster that the Russians have. Um, similar in size to the ours, so as it doesn't change the configuration of the system, but it has unique solid fuel principles that allow the the, the, the missile to burn in variable speeds, making it impossible to target. The other thing it does is it has the, um, it doesn't use traditional MIRVs. I keep hearing people say multiple, uh, you know, independently targeted warheads. That's not what this was, not at all. This is the new system. The new system wow. is instead of a bus, a plate, so to speak, where the warheads are attached, that separates from the, the, the missile and then comes in and releases the warheads to their target on a trajectory though, because it's still moving as this happens. What we have now is independent mini missiles that are there and they fire themselves. So the, the first stage takes it up, second stage puts it in, and then you fire these independent missiles and these missiles, each one of them had six large submunitions on them. This is where the name hazelnut comes from. Because if you look at a hazelnut tree, you look at the pod of nuts, it's exactly what you see with these submunitions coming down. Um, this missile was developed specifically to take out Dark Eagle missile arrays. If you take a look at the layout, the footprint of the Dark Eagle, where the radar is, where the command and communications are, where this, this missile is designed to annihilate that. People kept saying, where's the explosion? It's not meant to be high explosive. It's meant to be a kinetic kill. And these submunitions wow. come down and they will kinetically kill everything on the ground. These submunitions come down at such velocity that if they hit the Aegis ashore, it will be a smoking hole in the ground. This is what this missile is designed. Putin just put us on notice that he has a conventional missile system that is designed to preempt anything and everything NATO plans on doing to Russia, and there is no NATO response. There's nothing they can do about it. This is literally the equivalent of the most alpha wolf in the world coming in and pissing all over your home. That's what Putin just did. And it didn't have to be this way. Putin said right there, your withdrawal from the INF Treaty was the greatest mistake you have ever made. Because now you have compelled us to do this. And here we are. We didn't want to be here, but because of all the provocations you've done, we have checkmated you. And that's the case. I don't think the West has woken up to what has just happened. Absolutely not. In fact, uh, the West is still um, thinking that this is just a bluff from Putin. Uh, Putin has nothing that he can use to destroy NATO. 
and that uh, they can just uh, provoke Putin, uh, go inside Russia like they did with the uh, Atacams missiles and the uh, Storm Shadow missile from UK. I cannot fathom the stupidity of UK government. UK is so close to Russia and they have no response to Russian weapon system, the Orange missile. If they launch just one of those on UK, UK has no way to respond to this. UK has absolutely zero way to defend themselves. And it can hit target anything, anywhere in the UK. And they, even though they have no response, they have no defense from this kind of orange missile from Russia, nevertheless, they dare to fire Storm Shadow missile into Russia, which did not cause any damage. There was no significant fire or explosion, anything of that sort. We just heard some sonic boom, and that's about it. On the other hand, you have Russian Orenshik, uh, Orenshik uh, missile. It was so chilling that anyone who saw how it came down on Ukraine's Dnipro city would know the power and the ability Russian military has, the capability they have. They are not bluffing. So Scott Reader is, uh, what he's saying is exactly what we are seeing from UK and US government. Another thing we have to understand is that if UK is incinerated by Russia, US is not going to come to its rescue at all. Because next thing Russia will do will target New York, California, Texas. And in no time, all of these states will be on fire. They'll be completely pulverized by Russian bombs. And US will have no answer. So no, U.S. knows it, therefore they're not going to come to the rescue of U.K., Poland, or Sweden. And these countries have become so delusional that they're risking their own life, pinning their hope on U.S. to rescue them. This is the level of stupidity they are going through. Well, not stupidity. I mean, some people, as I said, it has been controlled by the military-industrial complex. And they are forcing these governments to accept this kind of warfare. And, in, and you know, if they don't, they'll lose their power. They'll not be able to campaign. They will not be able to run their offices, run their country. So it is all tied up to those greedy people. But again, uh, who will pay the price? It's going to be ordinary people. So Scott Ritter is what he's saying, man, this guy has so much knowledge. If you as UK or US government, don't trust him, don't listen to him, you don't care what he's saying, I think that is enough to say that these people are really stupid.